What have you learned about life from your father, Robert F. Kennedy? First of all, I'll say this about my uncle, because, you know, I, I'm going to apply that question to my uncle and my father. My uncle was asked when he first met Jackie uh, Bouvier, who later became Jackie Kennedy. She was a reporter for a newspaper, and she was doing, she she had a kind of column where she'd do these, these kind of um, uh, pithy interviews uh, with, with both famous people and kind of man in the street interviews. And she was interviewing him and she asked him um, what he, she thought, what he believed his best quality was, his, his strongest virtue. And she thought that he would say courage because he had been a war hero. He had, he was the only uh, president who, and this one, he was senator, by the way, uh, who received the Purple Heart. And, you know, he had uh, a very kind of famous story of, of him as a hero in World War II. And then he had come home and he had written a book on, on moral courage among American politicians and won the Pulitzer Prize. That book, Profiles in Courage, and uh, which was a series of incidents where um, American political leaders made decisions to uh, to embrace principle even though their careers were at stake and in most cases were destroyed by their choice. So she thought he was going to say courage, but he didn't. He said curiosity. And um, I think, you know, looking back at his life, that the best, that that it was true. And that was the quality that allowed him to put himself in the shoes of his adversaries. And he always said that if you, if the only way that we're going to have peace is if we're able to put ourselves in the shoes of our adversaries, understand their behavior and their contact, that context. And that's why he was able to, um, you know, during the, uh, he was able to resist the intelligence apparatus and the military during the Bay of Pigs, when they said, you've got to send in the Essex, the aircraft carrier, and he said no, even though he'd only been in month, two months in office, he was able to stand up to them because of because he was able to put himself in the shoes of both Castro and Khrushchev and understand there's got to be another solution to this. And then during the Cuban Missile Crisis, he was able to endure when the, the, the narrative was, okay, Khrushchev acted in a way, as an aggressor, to put missiles in our hemisphere. How dare he do that? And Jack and my father were able to say, well, wait a minute, he's doing that because we put missiles in Turkey and Italy that were right on, you know, and the Turkish ones right on the Russian border. And they then made a secret deal with Dobrenin, with Ambassador Dobrenin, and, you know, with Khrushchev, um, to uh, to remove the missiles in in Turkey, if he moved the Jupiter missiles from to Turkey, if if uh, uh, so long as Khrushchev removed them from from Cuba, every there were thirteen men on the executive on the end, what they call the Ancon committee, which was the group of people who were deciding, you know, what the action was, what what they were going to do to end the Cuban Missile Crisis, and virtually, and of those men. Eleven of them wanted to invade and wanted to bomb and invade, and it was Jack. And then uh, later on, my my father and and Bob McNamara, who were the only people who were with him, but because he was able to see the world from Khrushchev's point of view, he believed that there was another solution. And then he also had the moral courage. So, um, my father, you know, to get back to your question famously said that moral courage is the most important quality and it's more it's more rare than courage on the football field or courage in battle than physical courage it's much more difficult to come by but it's the most important quality in a human being and you think that kind of empathy that you referred to that requires moral courage it certainly requires moral courage to to act on it hmm. you know and particularly you know in you know, any time that a nation is at war, there's kind of a momentum or an inertia that says, okay, let's not look at this from the other person's point of view. And um, that's the time we really need to do that. 